everybody, Max Scoville here on today's fix of gaming news. Elden Ring's latest update should make Shadow of the Erd Tree a little bit easier. Sony announced some PlayStation Plus games for July, and there is a brand new remaster of the original Dead Rising in the works. Let's get into it. Nobody expected Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree expansion to be easy, but if you're struggling to the point that it's more frustrating than fun, good news, because the first post-launch update will include some balancing tweaks that'll presumably work in the player's favor. Posted on the Bandai Namco blog, the patch notes for update 1.12.2 detail a number of bug fixes, but also some of the changes to gameplay. For starters, the attack and damage negation has been increased for the first half of the maximum amount of blessing enhancements, and the second half will now be more gradual, but the attack and damage negation granted by the final a level of blessing enhancements has also been slightly increased. So in other words, it'll be a little bit easier to get good early on, and then once you've gotten as good as possible, you'll be real good. I, I, I guess. It's, it, it's patch notes. This update also includes some bug fixes, including one issue PC users were having where the ray tracing was turning itself on and then making their 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 rays all traced when they didn't want them traced that much. So now that's that's not a thing anymore, I guess. I don't know. Check your settings. Aside from all that, if there's a particular boss you're hoping would pull their punches a scoonch or a weapon that doesn't hit quite as hard as you'd like, don't lose hope. The patch notes add that other balance adjustments as well as bug fixes are also planned for a future patch. Breaking news, everybody. They continue to update games after they come out. But in the meantime, if you're stuck, IGN's wiki team has been burning the midnight hefty oil pots, putting up tons of tips, tricks, guides, walkthroughs, maps, and all that good stuff. And hey, if you need a little bit of additional insight, Miyazaki said it's okay to look at guides, just don't get too much insight or you're gonna start seeing things on the side of buildings. Though I guess that only happens in Bloodborne. Hey, speaking of PlayStation games, Sony has revealed the games that'll be available to all tiers of PS Plus subscribers in July, the month that somehow starts next Monday. Jeepers, time flies. For starters, Borderlands 3 will be available for PS4 and PS5, which is smart considering the Borderlands movie is dropping on August 9th. This is technically the fourth game in the Borderlands series since there was a pre-sequel released after 2, but if you've never played any of the Borderlands games, you're still going to be able to figure out what's going on if you jump into the third one first. And by third one, I mean fourth one. If you'd prefer a game about heavily armored men with missing teeth and knives on their feet battling it out in an icy arena with wooden scythes, well, NHL 24 might be more your speed. That's available for both generations of PlayStation as well. Hockey lore is infamously complex, so if you want to make sense of what's going on in NHL 24's story, you should probably play the first 23 games first, or maybe just watch some Vadi Vidya explainer videos. I'm kidding, but not really. Hockey is confusing to me. I tried to watch the first episode of Shorzy. I did not understand what they were saying one bit. And finally, there's Among Us, which also hits both the PlayStations, though I don't think you're going to see too much of a difference performance-wise. The viral cartoony multiplayer whodunit has gotten consistent updates since it blew up back in 2020, so if you haven't played it in a while, it might be worth checking that out. Again, these are available for all three tiers of PlayStation Plus subscribers. Once they go live, you'll have until August 6th to grab them. If you haven't grabbed this month's games, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake, AEW Fight Forever, and Streets of Rage 4, you've got until July 1st to do so. And finally, a fun surprise announcement this morning was Capcom's tease of Dead Rising's Deluxe Remaster. Originally released on Xbox 360 in 2006, Dead Rising turned you loose in a zombie-infested shopping mall and let you use basically anything as a weapon. It was pretty cool back then, and it still is, so definitely worth revisiting. Since then, Dead Rising has gotten a handful of sequels, DLC expansions, and a couple movies, plus it already got remastered once. There's always some confusion over what to expect from a video game remaster versus a full remake, but the teaser acknowledges the 2016 HD remaster and then calls this one an updated release with a brand new look. So maybe a deluxe remaster is like somewhere between a you know coat of fresh high-res paint and a full ground-up remake like we've gotten with the Resident Evil games. The way the teaser lists the release years of the previous iterations of Dead Rising and then prefaces this one with 2024 seems to suggest that it might actually be out this year, but there's no official release window or platforms list it, just that more info is coming soon. Gamescom LATAM actually kicks off today live from Brazil, and you can catch IGN's coverage of it for the next three days, so maybe we'll see more from Dead Rising there, or other games, who knows? And at the very least, we've got two other Gamescoms happening in the next few months, so maybe we'll hear more there. They'll definitely show off something, but when we hear more about Dead Rising, we will let you know. That is your daily fix for Wednesday, June 26, 2024. If you haven't yet, go check out the trailer for Alkahest, which is a very cool looking first person RPG. And for everything gaming and entertainment, you are already in the right place, IGN.